Welcome to the Quick Train Modeler video training series. This module will cover grid statistics. Grid statistics allow you to extract additional information from your LiDAR point cloud and can be useful for everything from quality control to automated feature extraction. Grid statistics works by overlaying an evenly spaced grid on top of the point cloud. Within each grid cell, summary information about the points contained within that grid cell can be computed including, but not limited to, second order slope, the number of points, the point density, and the z-deviation. To start the grid statistics process, click on the grid statistics button in the toolbar. This launches the generate grid statistics window. In the upper left you'll see the reference grid. The spacing refers to the size of the grid cells. Quick Train Modeler will assign a default spacing based on the properties of your point cloud. Of course you can adjust that spacing as you see fit. In the upper right are the metric settings. You must choose a variable and in some cases a statistic to go along with that variable. For example z, or the height of the points, has numerous variables associated with it. Other variables such as point density, are a direct measure and thus have no statistics associated with them. When you're ready to compute the statistics, click on the Calculate Metrics button. To view the statistics, click Auto Set, and then Apply Texture, and then you can close the Grid Statistics window. The Grid Statistics are now displayed as a texture, and you can turn them on and off by clicking on the Toggle Loaded Textures button. As you can see here, the point density information gives us some valuable insight into how this LiDAR data was collected. Let's generate some more statistics. This time we'll choose to generate the z-deviation. If you've generated more than one grid statistic and passed it through to a texture, you can toggle on and off those texture layers by going to the Texture menu and choosing Show Hide Textures. You'll notice that the Z-Deviation layer does an excellent job distinguishing between buildings, where there's relatively low Z-Deviation in the point cloud, and trees, where there's a high amount of Z-Deviation in the point cloud. If you'd like to generate grid statistics for another model using the exact same settings, click on the Save Template button. In the Save Profile dialog, simply type a name for your profile and click Save. Once you've opened your new model, click on the Grid Statistics button, click on Load Template, select the Save Profile, and click Open. Click Yes to generate the z-deviation now, and then close the Grid Statistics window. Providing your model is loaded in the QTA format, you can attribute each point with a grid statistic by clicking on the Push Stat into QTA button. Now if I zoom into my model and hold down the Shift key to query a point, you'll notice that in the Point Query window, the grid statistic has been added as the last attribute. If you would like to work with the grid statistics outside of Quick Train Modeler in either an image processing or GIS software package, after you calculate metrics, click on Save Values GeoTIFF. This will save the grid statistics, in this case C deviation, as a GeoReference TIFF file. You can then use your GIS software, such as ArcGIS, to open the GeoTIFF and work with it just as you would any other raster dataset. If you'd like to export both the grid statistics and the associated color ramp, choose the Save GeoTIFF option in the lower right-hand corner. This will save a three-band GeoTIFF with associated RGB values. We hope you enjoyed this module. If you'd like to view additional topics, please visit the Applied Imagery website, and be sure to check back often as new video modules are being added on a regular basis.